Hello people, my name is Ferdy and in this tutorial I will show you how you can work with the new container within the Elementor page builder, the Elementor free version and the pro version. Until this point we worked with the sections, columns and elements within Elementor, but this will change. We will get rid of the sections, we will get rid of the columns and we will start working with containers and with elements. This will make the website faster and it gives you more flexibility to design the website you have in mind. But it's a little bit harder to learn and that's why I created this tutorial. I have to tell you that it's still in beta version. So there are a few um, bugs. I will show you where they are. But when the, the final version is released, the, 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 the live version, I will create an in-depth tutorial about it on how to make websites with the container. But right now, you'll start learning a lot if you watch the tutorial and then you're ready when the new container arrives. Having said that, let's get started. What you see over here is an old or the classic version of Elementor. I have an inner section over here and if I want to build a page, I can click on the plus. I will create a section with columns and in those columns I can place elements or widgets depending on how you want to call them. I call them elements. I can drag them over here and play around and create beautiful websites. But, but with the new version, things will change and in this store I will show you how. So I will save this right now and in order to update, because uh, we're still in the beta version, click over here, go to the dashboard and click over here. We go to Elementor settings, then to the experiments tab and I can activate all the experiments or I scroll down and I search for optimized DOM output. So I click over here on active and I save the changes. Now here I can install the Elementor Develop Edition. I click on Install and Activate. Activate the plugin. Then I want to update Elementor to a beta version, which will probably be released in February or March 2022. And now when I go to Elementor Settings, Experiments again, I scroll down. And over here, I see the container and I want to activate it. Save the changes. Click over here. Edit the page with Elementor. And now we have the container over here. Let me show you what I always do with my page builder. I go over here to the settings, to the user preferences. I bring the user interface to dark and I add the editing handles. The navigator, I drag it to the right. And I click on update. Then I want to go to the settings of the page and I want to bring the page layout to Elementor Canvas. That means I don't have a header or a footer. I also do not see the title. So this is what I see and I still see columns and I can duplicate them. I, I can still work with columns. Why? Because if you have a website that is currently working with the classical way of creating websites with sections, columns and elements, it will maintain that. So I can still build something over here. But now if I click on the plus, this looks different. So if I click over here, it looks a little bit darker as you see, because this is a container. This is not a section. And that's what you see over here. Here you have a section, that's the upper area. And here we have a container. So over here, I cannot add columns. It's a different way of working. It's a little bit uh, harder to learn, but you have more freedom to create a design you have in mind and that's why i created this tutorial to show you how everything works so let's play around with this i can go to the elements i can search for an image and also here i see the container so i can also drag it over here i can also have a container in a container we'll talk about that but right now i want to drag an image over here grab it i upload a few files all those images over here and i want to start with image one. I insert the media and there it is. You know what? I will get rid of this. I don't need it. I click over here. I go to the style and I change this to, let's say 200 pixels. And now if I duplicate this, I can do it also over here. Duplicate command D when it is selected. I see those four images below each other. I can click over here, choose the second one, third one, and the Fourth one, update. So what I see, I don't have a section with columns and then 
elements, I have a container and in that container, I have the images and they will align automatically depending on what we choose. So if I click over here, I go to the container settings and here at the layout, I can change the width in pixels. So I can make it smaller as you see 500 pixels or wider. I can change it in percentage. So if I would say 50%, it is 50% of 100% and 100% is full width or the viewport width. That means it's depending on the screen I use. So if I would close this, you see it becomes bigger. And if I um, bring it back, it becomes smaller. So depending on the screen and the same is over here with the, the, the viewport height. I want to use a percentage and I want to put it to 100. So we use the full width of this page. And then over here, we have a minimum height. Well, since we have four elements below each other, it's already quite high. So if I increase it, nothing happens unless I extend the height that it already has, as you see over here. So let's put it uh, on 700. So there's a small gap over here. And then over here, there's the direction. How should this be displayed from top to bottom? That means in columns or in a row that's from left to right. And that you see this whole area is taken by this element. And depending on what you choose, column or row, you see the settings over here change. So let's do that one once again. Column, it changes. Row changes back. Then there are also other options. Right now we start here with this image. If I say a reversed row, we end with that image. So it's uh, reversed. <laughs> and then with same with columns on top, a reversed, sorry, reversed column. It's at the bottom. Well, I only use those two, the row or the column. So we have columns over here and then I can align them. I can bring them to the top. So the flex start center, then they will be placed in the center vertically. And then at the end, or stretch but for me those three options will do so this vertically because we have a row but we can also justify it different ways so we have the flex start that's already the case or in the center or at the end or space between this is interesting there's space uh, an even amount of space between all the elements then there's a, another one space around so also at the left and at the right, there's as much space. So here is only one element. So there's, so there's this amount of space, but the same amount is also over here and over here at the other side. So there is space at the left and the right of every element. And then there is space evenly. And that means that the space you see over here is the same totally at the left and totally at the right. So no columns, but we still have a lot of flexibility. We can also adjust the spacing between all the elements by dragging this over here, depending on what you use. So here it's at the left and then I still can adjust the spacing in pixels, percentage or a viewport width. Then there's wrap. Okay. Let me add a heading over here. And I go back to the container settings over here. I can have a wrap. So right now nothing is selected. So if I would make this smaller, you see the images become smaller because they have to fit in this column. What should happen with the wrap? If I turn this on, that means there's no wrap. Well, that's already uh, the case. So nothing changes. But if I turn this on, it does not make the images smaller, but it forces to go to a new area below. So then it looks like this. It automatically goes to a new row below. And then when they cannot uh, do anything anymore, they become smaller. And what you see over here, this text is outside of this area. So what I also can do with the overflow, I can hide it. So then you don't see this text over here. So those are, those are a few options. Let me bring this back to 100%. And then over here, there's the HTML tag. So by default, if you do default, it's fine. You can rename it over here. You can call this the header. But what you can also do, change the HTML tag to header. 
it, it does not change anything. It will change in the HTML of the page. And in that way, I think it's better to grab something that fits the best. So in this case, it will be a header. But if you want to create a link, then something changes. So if this is the header and I want people, when they click here, to go to a certain page, I can make it a link. And then I can link it to HTTPS for the corpus hook. Let's come. If I want to in a new tab, new window. Let me check. If I click somewhere, I go to this page. So that's what you can do. I bring it back to default. So I want to take a look a little bit more to this area because right now the direction is row, but I can also change it to column. And then again, we can do the same thing. I can bring everything to the center. I can bring this to the center vertically or to the end or space between all the same things like that. So what can we do with this? It's called a flex box, the container. So you need, you, you need to be able to be flex with everything. So I can adjust those settings, but what I also can do, I can click on an individual element, go to advanced. It's the layout for the individual area. So I can change the width for this one, make it smaller if I want to in percentage or in pixels. I can align it left or right or in the center. I can change the margin or the padding. So I can say uh, it should have some margin at the right. So what I can do, okay, let's do something. Um, I can align it to the left and I can change the order. So I can bring it on top or I can give the number. So I can get, give this number one. Then over here, I can give this number two. What I also can do, I can grab this one, go to advanced, go to position, make it absolute. <laughs> but then when I want to change it, there's a bug. So a uh, bug, bug, there's an error. I will let Elementor know about all the errors there are. So what I can do, I can close it and edit it with Elementor again. I can change the offset over here. And then if I view the changes, it looks like that. So it gives you quite some freedom, but okay, this is still looking a little bit weird. Like, okay, nobody wants to make a website like this. So let's make a page. For instance, um, this one. And let's see how we can do this. So over here we have a section. We have um, an inner column with two buttons. How can we do the same thing? So I get rid of this. I create a new container. I can do that by clicking here. By, by clicking on the container and dragging it here or by clicking on the plus or by duplicating something. So there are a few ways, but one of the easiest ways is just clicking here and then I choose this one. Okay. What I do, I go to the style background type. Okay. I go to it a little bit faster since this is about the same thing of what we've done before with the columns and the sections. So I um, change the side to cover. And I drag an image over here, which is Elementor. I can bring it to the center. I don't have to, but I can. I can change the amount of pixels. And then I go to the container and I can change the minimum height. So it looks like that. Then I want to bring it everything to the center and to the center like that. I go to the style, background overlay. Okay, I update it. I want to use uh, specific colors, so I go to the side settings, global colors. The first one is this blue one. And the second one can be a Can be anything, of course. 
that one. Okay, update. Go back, close this. I go to the container and then to the overlay gradient, color one, color two. I change this to 45 degrees. I can increase the overlay. And what I see is not full width. So I can go over here and I say percent 100 and then it's full width. Okay, then I want to have a heading. That heading says make your first website. I want to align it, so I want to make this bigger. So I click over here, I say yeah, uh, 600. Okay, <laughs> cool animation. I think it will go to 600. If that is the case, that will be funny and weird at the same time. No. Okay. I never had this. Okay. I change the style. You know what? I will focus on the, the, the container elements. Otherwise, it will take too much time. Okay. Really quick. White. I'm a tutorial maker, so for me it's hard to just go over things. I want to let everything be in depth. So really quick, align this. Make it make it thinner. And pixel perfect, pixel perfect, advanced. Bring it a little bit closer. Okay, update. Now I want to add a new container over here. I go over here and I want to add a button. I drag it. Learn Elementor. Make it a big, bit thick, uh, bigger. And then when I hover over it, I change the color. And then I duplicate it. And then I say, Learn Gutenberg. <laughs> of course, like we would want that. No, respect to Gutenberg, they're getting better and better. But at this point, I'm not that happy with them yet. Then I click over here on the container, the inner container, and I change this from columns to rows. Then I bring it to the center. Sorry. Then I bring it to the center. But what I don't like is that not everything is in the center. Although over here, I've said that everything should be in the center. Why is that? It's a bug. It has to do with the minimum height. If I would change that to nothing, then it will be sent in the center. So if I increase this, it will be increased over here, this blue area. So I think that's a, a bug problem. So what we can do right now, we can use the spacer. And then use um, the same amount of pixels or, you know, duplicate it, select it, command D. Control D, I drag it over here. So, oh, all the way. So that's the way, no, no, no. Okay, wait, drag this over here and then the container above it. That's what I want. So that's the way to fix it. Elementor, make your first website in capitals, of course. Change the colors. Okay, and in the background, one more thing. That's what I personally like, the, the attachment fixed. Okay, so that's how you create it. So now let's take it a step further. Let's create an area like this over here. So I create a new area, this time with three columns. And in the first one, I click on the plus and I search for an icon box. And again, I don't want to focus too much on the, the styling. So um, I will just grab this color or a, a text. Okay. Then below, I have a gallery with a few images. So let me, for the sake of the tutorial, use one image. And then below that, a button. 
or I can duplicate this one, drag it over here. Over here, I click over here, I make it full width. And I'm okay with that. So what I can do, I can go to the icon box. Then I can go to the advanced area and go to the background and make it white. I click on the container, advanced, uncheck this and I bring it back like that. Let's say minus 100. Okay, then I go to the element. I go to the padding. And I increase it a little bit. 20. Then I go over here. Now I go to the spacer. I decrease it a bit. So let's say 80, 130 minutes minus 50. So it's still in the center. Okay, so this is how it looks. Now I want to uh, duplicate this container so I can remove this one, select it and delete. And over here, sorry, container, command D, command D. And of course I can change this to film and to web design. Okay, let me take a break and then fix a few things, make it look better. So that looks better. Update and the next bug I see. It's at the left. So I think, hey, let me fix that. I go to layout, say, um, let's say 80%. And if I uh, bring it to the center, and I check the results, it's still at the left. So I think that's a bug. Uh, I see no, nothing I should do over here. You see it the right way. So what I would like to do is 100%. With 100%, you see it the right way but I don't want it to be that big. I want it to be 100% of the, the width of the website. So I could say uh, 1140, but then somehow it will be adjusted at the left. So that's the bug I see with the, the, the live version, the, the right version, not the beta. I think it will be fixed. What you also can do, get rid of this navigator and click on this arrow. And then you see how it will look. How does it look on a mobile? You can click over here. This is fine on a mobile. Okay, make this smaller. And you see an icon, so you know it's for the mobile. Over here. Content, bring it to the center. Make your first website. I can change the line height. And then this is automatically adjusted. This looks nice. What I can do, there's not much space over here. So I can go to the full screen version. Go to this button over here. I can go to advanced. Uncheck this and at the bottom. I want to increase the padding. Right mouse click, copy, paste the style, paste the style. And that means that when we go to a mobile, there will be a little bit more space over here. And what we also can do, that's new. We go to the um, container and then add layout. I can make this a link, an A to this page. So um, forward slash photography for instance, and then add style, at hover, we can make it a little bit, okay, let's try this one like that. And then we can make it a little bit grayish, just a little bit. And then over here, copy, paste style, paste style. And then we go to the smartphone version, I think that is great. Okay, let's go to apple.com. Let's see if we can create something like this. So um, 
in other words, a little bit next level. I click on the plus and then I see this area. So I click over there and then I see the container with four containers in it. I select one command D and command D. So we have six air areas just like here. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I already downloaded the images. Um, there are ways to do that. I don't want to get a lawsuit from Apple, so I will not explain how. So I click over here on the, the section. I go to style, normal background type, click on classic. And I want to choose an image. I go to upload files. And I search for this watch. Open. Insert. I see nothing, so I change the size to cover. Okay. Then I want to go to the layout. I want to change the minimum height. Okay. I go to the style again, the position. Let's say center, center. And what do I see over here? The text new. So I drag and header. Again, I will not make it pixel perfect, but I say new. I can change the font. Do something else. And change the size. Of course, I can change the color. And then at the content area, I bring everything to the center and to the top. So below, I want to have an image. Watch series seven. Okay. Make it smaller. Pixels. I can measure it. Command shift four. Let's say 190 pixels. Introducing our largest display yet. Well, I guess you know how to at this. Okay, let's do those. Let's do those to let's do those to buttons um, by inserting a container. And then it's the same as this one. So I can duplicate it, bring it down. Of course, I can make it really normal buttons, no background. Okay, then I click over here. I make it a little bit higher. And over here, I change the spacing to zero. The colors. to blue and the text to 400. Copy, paste style. And then of course I need to uh, link them to a different link. And then the second one, shot on iPhone, call for entries. So again, I do the same thing. So I can also copy, and paste the style. And then I go over here. I change the background. I called it honey because I don't know exactly what it is. And I can add my heading. Shot on iPhone. Dot enter or a break code. Shot on iPhone. Call or entries, make a break, dot, and I can go to advanced, uncheck that area, bring it a bit lower, duplicate the area, click over here, get rid of this margin top 
I can change the text. Submit your best photos. Macro break photos before February 16. Of course, this text should be smaller. Learn more. Learn more. Okay, update. Let's take a look. How are we doing? And I know this looks weird. This is all part of the bug. But you can see how this looks. What you also can do, get rid of this navigator and click on this arrow. And then you see how it will look. So now you know how to create a layout like this using the new container. And then you can put it all back and continue to edit. This is all part of the bug, the weird, the weird bug. As I said, I will make a new tutorial, a better tutorial when it's finally released. What I want to do, I want it to be full width. So I click over here, change it to 100, update. And now it looks like that. So now I can duplicate it at this area, this area, this area, this area. And then we're already at the bottom. If you want to import this area, you can go to 30corp.com, go to two templates, leave your name and email address. You can unsubscribe anytime. And then we can go to the footers of Elementor Pro. And there I created this. So you can uh, import it into your website and then change all the links and stuff. So all this can be made using Elementor. So as I said, it's 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 a tutorial, but not that in depth. I just show you uh, a little bit how it works with containers. By now, you should know a little bit of the basics and how to create something like this. And uh, as I said, when it's live, when the live version will be updated, the, the real live release, I will create an in-depth tutorial and let you know how everything works and how to create websites the new way using containers. I will end with the following. Over here, I made this website using sections, with columns, and elements. If I want to convert it, I go back and I share the gospel with them. Now, not that way of conversion. I go back, I go to slap, to slap. Have you found that? No. Then go to Elementor settings, experiments. We do the same thing. I active everything. Why not? We're not on the live server. And then um, everything is active. I save it again. Come on, Elementor. Where's the new version? Activate. Save it. I should see uh, a new Elementor area over here. So maybe I can go to updates. How about plugins? There it is. I already had it. Okay. That makes sense. So now I activate it. Now go, I go back to the home page. I edit the page with Elementor. Okay. What I can do, I can click on any section. Let me call this one three columns. And then over here at the section convert to a container. I can convert it. It will make a copy. If I get rid of this one, you see it's now a container and it looks pretty much the same. I do the same over here, apply, get rid of this section. So it's not perfect working perfectly yet. This one looks better apply this one also so as you see there are a few things that need to be fixed but um 
I think it's a great update. It's a great way to create websites. It will get better. We will get better and our websites will get better and the websites of our clients will get better using this amazing new feature in Elementor. It will be released hopefully soon. Thank you for watching this video. As I said before, it's the beta version. So when a live version um, will arrive, I will create in-depth tutorials about it, play around with it and show you the best I can. And if you want to be up to date when I publish new videos, feel free to subscribe to the YouTube channel. That would mean a lot to me. I want to reach 500,000 subscribers this year in 2022. And I do my best to get that by creating the best possible tutorials. So feel free to subscribe. And if you want to, you can like this video. That will also help me out a lot because then my video will be uh, found better on YouTube and then more people will see it. More people will view it. That's the same thing. And they will like it. And the more people will see it and the more people will like it and then the more people will subscribe and then i will reach my goal and then i'm happy and then i will set higher goals and when i set higher goals i will reach them and and then at the end of the day i don't know it makes me happy and even if you don't subscribe i still will be happy i love what i'm doing and thank you that you have watched this tutorial and have a great day bye bye